Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday. A couple of reminders for this coming week. Uh, Holy Thursday service is at 7 p.m., but it is at Sayville United Methodist Church. Good Friday service is here at 7 p.m. And if you are reading, and you know who you are, please be here a little bit early, maybe 6.45-ish, just so everything can be in place. Um, it's a very moving service, the, the Passion of Jesus, or it's also, I believe, called Tenebrae, which means darkness. Um, now on Easter, next Sunday, three of our young people will be participating and helping pastor in leading us in worship, because it's also Youth Sunday. And the Sunday school children will have a special performance, which I'm sure you will all enjoy very much. A reminder, um, in your bulletins, or perhaps you've been given it, there's a, an envelope for UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief, um, which is a wonderful organization. They are always present in a crisis or a disaster, whether it's in this country or around the world. And all of the money that's given to them goes to help the actual situation on the ground, not administrative costs. So if you can find it in your heart to give some money to them, that would be marvelous, and thank you. Um, my last message is, this is the last day to order Easter lilies. So please, if you can get your order in, that would be excellent. My thought for the day is, don't be afraid to be kind or patient or just plain nice. It takes a great inner strength to do all those things. So let's be kind to one another and continue our worship. Good morning. Uh, please stand for the call to worship if you are able. Let all creation shout. Let us wave the palm branches high. Jesus is coming. He comes in humility to claim God's own. May he claim us this day and heal our hearts. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, Hosanna to, to the blessed, blessed Son of God. God. Amen. Please remain standing for the opening prayer. Hosanna, blessed is Jesus who comes in God's name. We stand at the gates of our Jerusalem and wave our branches high. We get caught up in the excitement of the parade. Jesus sits astride a donkey, a beast of burden, bearing a most precious gift. Let the joy fill your hearts this day as we shout our hosannas. Praise God for the wondrous ways in which our lives have been touched. Prepare our hearts to worship and celebrate this day. Please be seated. <clears throat> the scripture reading today is from Psalm chapter 118, verses 1 to 2 and 19 to 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it in this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. 
The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal progression, a procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, please stand for the hymn of praise. Tell me the stories of Jesus in the hymnal, number 20, uh, 277, verses 1, 2, and 3. Good morning. good morning. Welcome everyone to Sunday morning service. It's so good to see all of your smiling faces. I am so happy you are here. Are you excited to be here? Amen. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Yes, we will. Right? Yes. So I would like to welcome any visitors. Do we have any visitors with us this morning? Oh, we're all family, nice. Well, welcome again, family. I just want to reiterate what um, Barbara said on this morning. Thursday, we will have the Maundy Thursday service at Sayville, so please, if you can, Come on over at 7 p.m. Don't let me be the only one there. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so we'll be there. And then Friday night. Friday night, uh, we will do the Passion of Jesus. So please, 7 p.m. Well, Barbara said, you said 645 for the readers? For the readers. For the readers. 645. And I thank all of you for reading. Um, on for Friday um, come out something special is going to happen at the end of the service so please come out I want to see this place filled amen? amen amen don't let us the readers me and my family and Martha be the only ones we want you guys here as well so please come out Friday night 7 p.m. We shouldn't be here longer than an hour. Okay, so come on out. It is prayer time in the sanctuary, and the altar is open at this time. I invite those who desire to come and kneel at the altar. Please do so. And as you are coming, I would like to read some of our prayer requests and our concerns. We have a Concern from a dear, sweet grandma. 
Linda Warner would like for us to pray for Donald Morrissey Jr. recovering from a cornea abrasion. Brother Justin is still recovering from a fracture to his temporal bone. So Grandma is soliciting prayers for her grandchildren. Amen, so let us pray for them. Prayers for a safe and successful surgical procedure for Dave Hollowell at Winthrop Hospital from his church family. Amen, we're gonna keep Dave in our prayers. Prayers for Kenny Zaleski, the seven-year-old boy who is in the hospital who is still waiting for a heart transplant. This is Lenny's neighbor, so let us continue to pray for Kenny Zaleski. Prayer, pray for my brother-in-law who had surgery, Frank Rice. Sister-in-law who has cancer and her mother has cancer. So let's pray for this family. Also, we want to pray for the family of Carolyn Hogue. This is George Hogue's sister-in-law who passed away. So let us pray for that family. Also, we want to pray for the family of Leah Doon Nash. She was a 44-year-old wife and mother of three daughters and she died in a car accident. So Gail is asking for our prayers. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies that are new to us each morning. God, we come before you as humbly as we know how, asking you to forgive us for all of our sins, O oh God. But more importantly, God, we want you to be in our midst. So we invite your presence in this morning. For your word says to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. To be thankful unto you, God, and to bless your holy name. So God, as we lift up your name, as we celebrate and shout Hosanna in the highest, God, we invite your presence in to move like you want to move, to heal like you want to heal, to deliver and set free your people who are in need of your help. God, we can't do anything without you, and we need you. God, we know that there is power in prayer. That's why we come before you and commune with you, God, asking you to help us. Because God, if you don't help us, there will be no help. So God, help us now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, each one of the prayer requests that went before, God, we ask that you move right now in the name of Jesus. God, look on the family of Carolyn Hogue. Oh God, help them in their hour of sorrow, God. God, mend the, 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 the heal the wounded heart, oh God. Oh God, help them as they prepare for funeral services, oh God. God, the family of Leah Nash, Father. God, we ask that you comfort her husband and, and the daughters and, and God, give them some sort of sign that you are with them, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh God, comfort them only like you can, Father. Oh God, we need you now, Father, to move on their behalf, God. We pray for Frank Rice, God. We pray for the, sis the sister-in-law, God. We pray for her mother, God, who has cancer. God, we know that you're able to heal. You're able to deliver. You're able to set free, God. We're asking you to move by your stripes. God, by your stripes, we are healed. So God, we're asking you to heal right now in the name of Jesus. God, look on little Kenny, Father. He needs a heart, Father. God, we ask that you heal his heart, God. Oh God, make a way for him, oh God. 
Oh, God, we pray that he has long life, good health, and long life, God. In the name of Jesus, touch, reach out and touch him, God, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, God. Let him feel your presence. Send your ministering angels to minister to him, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, right now, Father, oh, God, we're asking you to look on Dave Hollowell, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray that, that everything will be successful. Successful, oh God, in the name of Jesus, heal his body and bring him back to us, oh God, stronger than ever, God. In the name of Jesus, God, be there wherever he is right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, minister to him, oh God, as he prepares for procedure, Father. God, we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think. Oh, God, heal his body right now. In the name of Jesus, God, look on Donald and look on Justin. Oh, God, we're asking you that you would continue to heal them, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, there's nothing too hard for you. Nothing too hard. God, I pray that you hear grandma's prayers to heal her grandchildren, Father. In the name of Jesus, God, we know that you are able. You're able to do it, and we believe that it's already done. God, touch each and every one that is assembled here at the altar. Each of them come before you, oh God, with their own specific prayer request. God, we thank you for allowing us to be able to come directly to you, Jesus. Oh God, hear their prayer. Incline your ear unto us, oh God, and perform miracles. Turn situations around, God. In the name of Jesus, make a way out of no way, God. Oh God, and let there be a testimony that it was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. God, we believe believe it's already done, so we're thanking you and we're waiting in anticipation to see your hand move. We wait to see it come to fruition, and we thank you. We celebrate it. In the name of Jesus, God, we're not going to worry about that problem anymore. We're not going to worry about that situation anymore because we placed it in your hands, knowing that you have done it for us, God. You have healed us. You have delivered us. You have set us free because we walk by faith and not by sight. I don't care what my physical eyes see, but it's what my spiritual eyes know. In the name of Jesus, we are healed. If you believe that God has heard your prayer, join me in praying the Lord's Prayer at this time. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may return to your seats knowing that God has heard your prayer. At this time, we will have our choir anthem, Mercy Tree. of peace, bruised 
All right, before the kids go to Sunday school, can I have all the children in the back, please? In the back so we can get ready for our palm parade. Thank you. I would like to do a blessing of the palms. Please let us pray. Almighty and loving God, it is, it is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through Christ Jesus, our Savior. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as the Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. We pray, O oh Lord, bless these branches and make them holy 
May we also carry them forth from this place and crying out Hosanna in the highest and blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Acclaim Jesus as our Messiah and King and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Come on, let's help our children. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Amen. Wave those branches. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Amen, amen. Let's give it to our children for their prom parade. Amen. Look at them, they are so excited to go to Sunday school. They're running. <laughs> that is awesome. This morning, our text, scripture text comes from Luke chapter 19 verses 28 through 42. Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 42. Hear the word of the Lord. After Jesus had said this, he went on, his, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Says the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And he went along, as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Lord, bless your word for it is divine truth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this hour and this time. I pray that you would open up the hearts and the minds of your people, that they are receptive to the word that you have for them on this morning. I pray for your anointing, the anointing that destroys every yoke. 
I pray for your anointing, the, the anointing that makes preaching easy. God will be so careful to give your name honor, glory, and praise. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Well, today is Palm Sunday, just in case you didn't know. Like, why are those palms there? <laughs> just kidding. But today is Palm Sunday, the day taken from the gospel where a whole city threw a parade for Jesus. As Jesus rode into the city, the people threw palm branches in anticipation of his coming. Thus, we get our word Palm Sunday. This day marked a time of celebration where Jesus was to be worshiped and praised. So I would like to talk to you just for a few moments from the subject, don't rain on Jesus' parade. Don't rain on Jesus' parade. Most people love a parade. And we, we, we know that because there was one last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> you either love it as a participant or as a spectator, even if it's watching the parade on TV. Pre-COVID, New York City alone had over 60 parades a year. There's music, floats, colorful decorations, exquisite costumes, and plenty of food. People love the anticipation and the excitement. I can remember as a teenager in high school, I was a part of the marching band. And as soon as people would hear the beat of the drum, they would run out of their houses to see the parade. They would be smiling and dancing and waving. And to see such enthusiasm, it made us, the participants, excited and happy because we practiced very hard for the parade. On that first Palm Sunday, there was a parade. This is another important event in Jesus' life. It is a Sunday to recall the triumphant entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. He was riding a lowly donkey. There were no marching bands, but music filled the air with Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd, they, they really got into it. And when they took off their cloaks and spread them on the way to give Jesus the red carpet treatment as he rode into Jerusalem. Now, I'm sure if we could ask some of the people that attended that parade, why were they shouting? Why were they waving palms? Why were they throwing their cloaks on the ground? I'm sure many would say, I don't know. I'm just following the crowd. I was caught up in the excitement. I just wanted to fit in. It was a parade. That's what you're supposed to do. How many of us today have the same testimony? I was caught up in the excitement. I did it because everyone else did it. Sometimes following the crowd will lead you down the wrong path in life. And I'm sure many of you are saying, well, what's wrong with following this crowd? They were honoring Jesus. They recognized Jesus as the Messiah, the King. They were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What is wrong with that? Well, sometimes, the outward action of a person does not necessarily reflect their inward motives. 
from the outward action, it appeared that the crowd was with Jesus and was welcoming, welcoming him with open arms. But as we take a look at the parade from the perspective of Jesus, we will see a different side of the story. The spectators of the parade did not make that part, did not make the participant Jesus Christ excited and happy at all. The word of the Lord says, as Jesus neared Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. He cried, y'all. He saw what they were doing and he cried. If you would picture in your mind, the people were paying homage to Jesus, and as he saw this, he started crying. He recognized unforeseen things to come, including its destruction at the hands of Caesar. He looked intently at the city and said, if you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace. But now, they are hidden from your eyes. He saw their rejection of salvation. He wept because they would not accept the grace of God. They had their reasons, but all their reasons were nothing compared to the results of their actions. He wept for those who were rejecting the salvation and the eternal life that he was offering. Understand that salvation is in the person of Jesus himself and not a religious system. They were rejecting him and thus rejecting salvation. In essence, they reigned on Jesus' parade. So clearly this text is letting us know that Jesus was not concerned about what they were doing during the parade, but what would happen after the parade? Usually, after the parade is over, most people return home. The excitement diminished and their lives soon return to normal again. Business as usual. And I'm sure that the same, prob the same thing probably happened on that first Palm Sunday. The time came for them to put away their palms, to pick up their cloaks, to quiet their songs and return home. As the excitement diminished and the palms dried out and turned brown, what difference had the Christ made in their lives? That's the question that confronts us this day also. What difference has Christ made in your life? Here we have it in black and white. On Sunday, Jesus rode into the city with the people shouting praises and praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. On Friday, they were shouting, give us Barabbas. We want him. Crucify Jesus, crucify him. Why did the people change? Well, there are many possible reasons, but one simple reason is that their words did not match their heart. They possessed a casual faith and not a committed faith. They had religion, but they missed the person, Jesus. So how can we have a committed faith and not reign on Jesus' parade? How can we be real and sincere? How 
can we be consistent in all that we do? Well, this morning I want to offer you some pointers to such a faith. Point one is that a committed faith is not self-centered. It's Christ-centered. This sounds obvious, but we often miss it. In America, we tend to say to God, hey God, here is my calendar. Here is my agenda. Now, I can squeeze you in here, and I can squeeze you in there. Pulling God out or turning to God only when it's convenient or useful. We've got it all backwards, and God has to shake things up to get our attention. Because sometimes, some people will not pray until they get into a situation. Some people will not pray until their body is racked with pain. Some people will not pray until something happens, some crises happen. In our passage, the people praised Jesus as he passed by, but many of them praised him because of his miracles. He had healed the sick, he raised the dead. They praised him because he was serving them. For them, Jesus was their, their way to be politically delivered from the Romans, to be set free from Rome as Israel was set free from Egypt. Their praise was tempered with attitude of Jesus, what can you do for me? A few days later at the trial, they saw a beaten and disfigured Jesus, a man who no longer looked like a deliverer or a conqueror. And as words were said about him, they bought into all the lies and quickly changed their position. For them, it was about me, me, me. But we must choose to honor our great King Jesus Christ by giving him our very best, withholding nothing, giving him our all. Point number two is that a committed faith is relationship driven. Many of those who gathered to throw their coats and palm branches onto the streets and who shouted praises did so because it was the popular thing to do at that time. At that one brief moment, it became trendy. Perhaps some began doing it with sincere motives but others soon did it because others were doing it. And later at the trial, shouting crucify him was the thing to do. In fact, for a brief moment, it was trendy. It was a trending thing to do to make a mass murderer and criminal their hero when they shouted we want Barabbas. In our own lives, a committed faith comes only through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. One where every day is fresh and new as he personally directs our steps. In order to have a committed faith, we must develop and maintain a personal relationship with Jesus. We must spend time with the Lord. Can't you hear the Lord calling out to you today? This is the time for you to draw closer to the Lord more than ever. He's the one that will give you peace in the midst of the storm. He's the one that will give you that peace that surpasses all understanding. The Lord says, I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. It's time to draw nigh to the Lord 
and he will draw nigh to you. Somebody needs to give God some praise. It's a little quiet in here, so I need y'all to just shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. The third and final point is that, the com that a committed faith is not swayed or blocked by our personal trials and crises. At the parade, it was trendy to offer praise. Everyone was doing it. But at the trial, to speak out for Jesus was risky, possibly even life-threatening. Many of us come to Jesus expecting everything to go good, maybe some slight bad, but, but not too much of it. So when the bottom drops out for us, we often ask God, why? Why me? Why is this happening, God? thinking that it's not supposed to happen this way. If our faith is based on, situation, on our situation or circumstances, it will never be committed. It will always be casual. A committed faith takes the good with the bad. Knowing that all we are ever promised is that in the midst of both our good and our bad, that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us. Amen. Amen. He will stand with us. We are a people of faith. I'm walking by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He is with us. He's providing for us. As I close, a story is told of a little girl who, while walking in the garden, noticed a particular beautiful flower. She admired its beauty and enjoyed its fragrance. It's so beauty. It's so pretty, she exclaimed. As she gazed on it, her eyes followed the stem down to the soil in which it grew. This flower is too pretty to be planted in such dirt, she cried. So she pulled it up by its roots and ran to the water faucet to wash off the soil. It wasn't long until the flower wilted and died. And when the gardener saw what the little girl had done, he exclaimed, you have destroyed my finest plant. I'm sorry, but I didn't like it in, the, in that dirt, she said. The gardener said, I chose that spot and I mixed the soil because I knew that only there could it grow to be a beautiful flower. So you must know that God has placed us exactly where we are. We must trust him. In the trusting, we eventually will see that he is using our pressures, our trials, and difficulties to bring us to a new degree of spiritual beauty. True contentment comes when we accept what God is doing and thank him for it. 
We who have come to join the Palm Sunday Parade today need to ask ourselves, what effect will all of this have on us? We have watched the first Palm Sunday Parade before, and for many of us, we have joined in the parade for many years now. We have made this journey before from Palm Sunday through Holy Week, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday. And what effect does all this have on and in our lives? Are we reigning on Jesus' parade year after year? Are you causing Jesus to weep? The decision is up to you. Come to Jesus. Don't just stand in the Palm Sunday parade and try to get caught up in the excitement. See into that quiet and humble face of Jesus as he rides by. Know that his mind, that he has you in his mind, he's weeping for you. The Palm Sunday parade is about to begin. Don't be the one to reign on Jesus' parade. He came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. The humiliation, rejection, pain, and suffering that Christ has endured during this week, he did it just for you. Just for you. So let him know that you appreciate what he went through. And I admonish you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I admonish you to rededicate yourselves to Christ. Don't be guilty of reigning on Jesus' parade. I pray that you will see Jesus in your need today and that you will come to him and drink of the living water he has ready to pour out into overflowing in your cup. Let us pray. Almighty God, hear our prayers for the church and for the world. Grant that all who confess your name may be united in your truth. Live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Guide the people of this land and of the nation in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to honor and glory. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant us that, that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. All of these prayers, Father, we pray in your name. Thank God. Amen. 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 I pray that that has ministered to you, and please, we all need to accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. He is knocking at the heart, the doors of your heart. Will you let him in? Our hymn of response, All Hail King Jesus.
It is offering time in the sanctuary. I pray that you would give back to God as God has blessed you.
Generous God, you have blessed us with many gifts and drawn us together into Christ's body, the church. You have blessed us with generous and cheerful spirits. May the gifts of our money, time, and talents support the ministry of your church. Amen. Amen. Before we sing our closing hymn, we have a prayer request. Barbara Lyons would like for us to pray for her friend, Yvette, who is in the hospital with complications from ALS. So join me in praying right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we're asking you to look on Yvette right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you would bring healing to her body. God, everything that she's experiencing, God, we ask that you heal it right now. Remove it from her body. Those things that are not working as you designed, Father, God, we ask that you remove it now. God, pray. we pray that you minister to Yvette right now, even now, God. In the name of Jesus, let her know that she's not alone, but you are with her. God, strengthen Barbara as she ministers to her friend. Oh, God, keep them and bind them together in love and unity and let her feed off of Barbara's strength, that strength and love that you have placed in her. God, heal now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're, our closing hymn is All Glory, Lord, and Honor. <laughs> The road has been long. You have seen much on this journey, but it is not time to quit. There is much to be done. Go in peace, dear people of God. Go ready to proclaim with your lives that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Go to offer God's love and peace to all. Amen. Amen. Amen and the candles will now be extinguished.
As you leave this place, please grab your palms, raising them and waving, saying, Hosanna in the highest. There are palms in the front as well as palms in the back as you enter. So please feel free to take as much as you like. Go in peace.